I like being around people smarter than I am. I don't like around being around dummies. I'm often asked, uh, how did you come up with the idea of the TED conference? I saw there was a convergence, and the convergence was between the technology business, the entertainment industry, and the design professions. And when they did projects that I thought were okay, they always involved the others. And nobody saw that they were really one business. And so I thought, well, let me celebrate that. Let me see if I'm right, that they need each other to do good work. And I flipped around the letters. I wrote uh, Ted, and I thought, well, that's cute. I can give away teddy bears, and it's a funny word. And so I did a, a TED conference. And what was it, how was it different? Since 1970, I had been uh, fascinated with the idea of gatherings. Every conference that I saw was made up of the same pieces, out of the same set of blocks. Everyone was made up of panels of rich white people, men in suits, with lecterns, with long introductions, long speeches, save seats in the front row for, for sponsors and, and the other speakers. Uh, boring, and a place near a golf course. I tried to change the rules, but I realized that TED was innovation by subtraction. I decided to make short speeches, the 18-minute speech, famous 18-minute speech. No introductions, I would just say, come on up here, Herbie. Because they had it in a program, they could read it, they didn't need me to read it to them. And that by changing those things and by changing the fact that it wasn't on one subject like one kind of law, one kind of tax law or eye, ear, nose and throat specialist, but on almost everything. Now I'm trying to take it a couple steps further and celebrate the, what I think is the essence of meeting and greeting and talking and ideas and communication, which is the conversation. If it works, very soon there will be hundreds of conferences doing that. And they should. It's an idea that nobody owns, you should do it if it works. If it doesn't work, they'll go a different direction. And that's, that's okay too. I'm interested in gaps and I've been writing some things about gaps. There is a gap between having a conversation with another human being and FaceTime and Skype and telepresence and telephone and tweeting and blogging and email is a big gap. What's the gap? The gap is when you really want to meet somebody and talk to somebody and come up with an idea, you go and talk to them. And everything else is so much less. That's why the conference as a person to person meeting of people chatting and having a conversation that's unexpected, even with people in the audience they didn't expect to be there. W the WWW conference is, uh, in one way, a great leap backwards to uh, Gertrude Stein's salon in Paris, where wonderful people come and talk and uh, about subjects that are outside of their, sometimes the area of particular expertise, sometimes dead on their expertise, with varying degrees of respect for each other and they possibly come up with new ideas. People meet unlikely people together in the most comfortable of settings. So part of it is really that, and part of it is this going backwards to find out the purity of what a conversation can be. My new uh, gathering is truly like the dinner party I always wanted to have but couldn't. It's some extraordinary people. I pair these 60 people into 30 pairs, obviously, and I pose to each two a different premise, and they engage in intellectual jazz, improvised conversation. I'm doing everything counterintuitive. They don't, the people on stage don't face the audience. They're very close to each other on two couches, and they face each other. One of the pairings is Matt Groening, who is the man who created The Simpsons, paired with David Brooks, who is the quite famous columnist uh, for the New York Times, uh, conservative columnist for the New York Times. They both are in the media. They both are in entertainment, so they share that. They're both actually in politics because there's 
huge political underpinnings in the, in the message of the Simpsons. And the premise will be about that. What is similar about a cartoonist and a columnist? What is similar in how you communicate to the public your thoughts about the politics of our life, of our country, of our world? And how do you choose to communicate that by fable story, by parallel ideas. What power does each have? And how do you think you influence the human condition? And they talk. I'm Richard Saul Werman, and you're watching Thinker.